If the SVIX is a minus one time short volatility ETF, then does that mean that if the VIX index were to spike up 100%, then you would lose 100% of your SVIX position? And what if you were short the UVIX, which is a two times leveraged long volatility ETF? Does that mean that it would only take a 50% VIX spike to lose 100% of your UVIX money? In this video, we're gonna explore the relationship between the VIX index and all of the volatility ETPs. Let's try to nail down some good estimations here for how much money you're going to lose given a certain VIX index spike. So first of all, we need to know the long-term movement to the volatility ETPs in relation to the VIX index. And then if we know that value, we can easily convert that to a percentage. So let's use something called the beta factor. It's really pretty easy. Now I do have a full video covering just beta in detail. There's a link here if you want to see it, but really quickly, beta measures how much one security moves in relation to another security. In today's video, we want to know how much all the volatility ETPs move in relation to the VIX index. And beta is measuring two factors. First is is direction, and positive beta values means the securities move in the same direction, and negative beta values means the securities move in opposite directions. And then secondly, beta measures magnitude. A higher beta value means the security moves more in relation to the comparison security, and lower beta values means the security moves less. Now another key factor to remember here is that the VIX index actually has nothing to do with the volatility ETPs. The VIX index is derived from S&P 500 options activity. And the volatility ETPs derive their price from the value of the VIX futures that they hold, so totally unrelated price-wise. We just want to get an idea for the relative movement, and beta will tell us that. This will be really clear with an example, so let's start with the VXX. By the way, the historical prices for all the volatility ETPs are included in your volatility data spreadsheet. Check out this video here if you want to download that for free. But this chart shows the long-term VXX beta to the VIX index is 0.45. So what does that number mean? Well, remember, beta Beta measures direction and magnitude. Directionally, it's a positive number, so VXX and the VIX index move in the same direction. And magnitude-wise, 0.45, this means that on average, if the VIX index goes up by 1%, the VXX will go up by 0.45%. We can see that the VXX is a little less than half the exposure of the VIX index long term. Now, of course, this is just an average. Sometimes it does underperform the VIX, and sometimes it can overperform the VIX. Great. So now now we can start putting some numbers to this. So in the first case here, if you were short the VXX, and remember VIXY is materially the same thing as VXX, it's just an ETF instead. But if you're short VXX, then your beta to the VIX is now opposite. Instead of being 0.45 and moving in the same direction, it's minus 0.45 to the VIX moving in the opposite direction. So if the VIX were to double, which is the same thing as saying it goes up 100%, then you wouldn't lose 100% of your short VXX position because the beta beta is only minus 0.45, but you would lose 45% of your money if the VIX doubles. If the VIX were to go up 200%, well now you'd lose 90% of your short VXX money. And if the VIX were to go up a little more to that 222% level, now you would lose the full 100% of your short VXX position. Now remember I said it is a range that varies given the crisis. VIX futures could outperform the VIX, so I do think it's a good idea to include a column for a 25% buffer range. Long term, I would say a VIX spike of 167% would potentially take a short VXX position to zero. Now, very strong reminder here, short positions do have unlimited loss, so it doesn't stop at zero just because the math does. Keep that in mind. But now let's go through the rest of our volatility landscape and how those relate to VIX index moves. We'll stick with the long volatility ETPs first. UVXY is 1.5 times leveraged, and its beta to the VIX is 0.68, so it moves more than the VXX, of course. If you're short UVXY, then long term it would only require a 147% VIX spike to crush that position. But using our safety bandwidth, we're talking roughly 110% for the danger zone. Of course, that's a lot, but it can happen. Moving on to the extremely aggressive short volatility traders, what if you were short the UVIX? Well now, given that it's two times leveraged and has a beta of minus 0.82, long term it's only 122% VIX spike to crush that position, but 91% using our safety range. People who are short the UVIX are definitely going to feel nervous, and they should. 
And then lastly, the VXZ and VIXM, again, materially the same product, just ETN versus ETF. But given these are midterm futures products that do move a lot slower, the beta to the VIX index here is minus 0.2. So it would require a 500% VIX spike to take this short position to zero. Now let's go through the inverse volatility ETPs because these are the ones that you can just buy straight up and they are short volatility positions. So buying the SVIX, which is a minus one times inverse product, it means it's short volatility with a one times leverage factor. The SVIX beta to the VIX index is minus 0.41, requiring a 244% VIX spike to terminate SVIX. So for all those people wondering whether this is a one-to-one -one relationship, I get that question a lot. Does 100% VIX index spike mean the SVIX is dead? Well, no, it doesn't. The beta is only 0.41, so it would require about a 250% VIX spike to do that. Now, elephant in the room, if there's a liquidity crisis in the VIX futures themselves, then all bets are off. At that point, anything can happen, and we did see the old XIV terminate on just 115% VIX spike. Check out this video here, specifically talking about February 2018 Volpocalypse. And also worth noting, during Black Monday in October 1987, the old VXO using the S&P 100 before it became the VIX index using the S&P 500. On Black Monday, the VXO spiked 313%. And intraday, it was up almost 380%. I'll leave it up to you to judge whether something like that could happen in the modern markets, but it has already happened in the past, so it's at least something to think about. SVXY is a minus 0.5 times inverse volatility ETF. This is the one that our tactical volatility strategy uses. I think it's a great risk-reward ratio. Yes, it's half the performance of SVIX, but it's also built in half the drawdown. So using it tactically with volatility targeting, it's a really good leverage factor. Beta to the VIX index here is 0.23, meaning it would require a 435% VIX spike to terminate, and 326% using our safety range. That is a lot. It would be quite shocking indeed to see something even half that. And then lastly, ZVOL, this is the midterm futures product low beta to the VIX index here. Minus 0.2 beta would require a 500% VIX spike to terminate this thing. Knock wood, of course. Don't want to piss off the trading gods, but I am very comfortable saying this isn't possible. So even though the VIX index and volatility ETPs are technically entirely separate securities, using that beta factor, we can actually see the long-term relationship between them. If you're ever wondering how much the VIX index would have to spike to get your trade into trouble, come back to this video and this table will give you the estimate estimations to keep you relatively safe. Again, there is a range, be aware of that, but these are very good approximations. Like I said, the VTS community has a full volatility data spreadsheet for you, plus all the live trades for all our strategies, and a full course library teaching you how to trade these things and stay safe with either the ETFs or options. Definitely claim your free trial on my website or in the description down below. You're always welcome to join us.